Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian you know, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be diving straight back into the Monsters faction, as you might have already guessed from today's uh, featured card. We're going to be playing Arakas Queen herself, the big monster that you see right now. But instead of using her as most people use her, we're going to be actually be using her in an, an Arakas Swarm Insectoid deck. Um, created by one of my team Elder Blood teammates, Bricky. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, just head into the decklist straight away. Because as we're uh, about to fill the board with our creepy critters, there's uh, a few explanations that need to be uh, done. So we're going to be going through each and every single card in this decklist. It's a pretty standard Araka Swarm decklist from a few months ago, but with a few key additions. Um, namely Erden and Araka Queen herself, of course, and a few other minor tweaks on top of that. Um, we'll be going through each and every single card in detail, just highlighting a few of the tactics already. But if you're not interested in that, you can use the timeline down below as usual to skip to the example matches. The decklist is also available in the link in the description that will lead you to the Play Gwent website. And from there, you can export the deck or import the deck into your own game. And uh, let us know what you think, because we always like the feedback. And also, don't forget to upvote it on the website as well, because all help on that front is uh, really, really appreciated. So, with that being said, let's head into all of these cards straight away. First up, we have the creepy, slimy Andrega Egg. So, four power for four provisions, and if you destroy this card, you spawn three drones in the row. So, basically, seven points for four if you manage to destroy it. Otherwise, it's just a four for four. But an easy way to get us some drones, while also being a bit of a passive play, because your opponent can't really damage this thing without creating more points for us. Then we have the Andrega Warrior, 4 power for 4 provisions and on deploy you consume the adjacent units and if you consumed any insectoids you spawn a drone for every insectoid you consumed. Uh, meaning that if you just put it in between two drones this card is a 6 for 4 and of course you uh, could also use this card to make a bit of space since uh, the main drawback of this deck is of course being over swarming um, and that's of course something we want to avoid. Then we have two Kikimuru workers, so 7 power and 3 armor for 4 provisions, a uh, straight up 7 for 4, but of course if the armor is gone, this card will destroy itself. Uh, if it's on the melee row, you also gain 1 point of armor whenever you play an insectoid, but usually we're not going to be leaving this card on the board so uh, for so long. Uh, because we're trying to eat it with another card that we'll be talking about. Then double natural selection, we have the Araka Swarm leader ability, so every organic card we play will also give us a drone, a one power drone. Natural selection is our first organic card, and uh, we can use that to damage an enemy by four. And then, of course, if there is any excess damage, we also gain drones equal to that excess, excess damage. That was a weird word. Uh, and we get an extra drone because it's an organic card. So basic removal card for us. And then, of course, we need to generate a large amount of drones. So the Arcas Nest is perfect for that. Also an organic card. We spawn four drones on an allied drone and we get a fifth one because of our leader ability. Um, the other side of this deck, of course, means that we need to limit our swarm a little bit so we don't over swarm. Chimera is perfect for that, while also boosting up the swarm that we already have. So 5 power for 5 provisions, and on the pull you consume an allied unit, and if you're at Adrenaline 4, you also boost all the copies of the consumed units, so we want to aim for the drones, of course, um, on that row by 1. So any remaining drones will be boosted. Easily netting you uh, 10 to, I think the maximum is 13 points, since you have 8 drones left in the road where you consumed one. So 13 points at a max, but usually around 10 or a little bit more. Then Spontaneous Evolution is the second card, uh, aside from Argos Nest, with that we can use to quickly gain a swarm. So another organic card, so we get a drone automatically, and we boost an allied unit by 4. If we do that on an insectoid, we gain three drones on that same row. So that's basically always the thing that we're going to use it by for. Um, if we put it on a beast, the Chimera, I think, is a beast. So you could technically boost that by eight, but then we want to avoid having tall, uh, tall cards in this deck anyway. 
Aside from this queen, the Andrega queen, 6 power and 2 armor, and on the ball you can zoom an allied unit and gain its armor. So we're going to be trying to do that on the Kikimore worker to get a little bit of an engine going, because as long as this unit is armored, she will damage herself at the end of the turn by a 1 and spawn a drone. So functioning as a consume and also giving us more drones, so functions really, really well in our archetype. Now we have a uh, few control options as well. Dorgare of Vol is the, well, one of those. Uh, six power for six provisions and you just plain old lock a unit. Next up, of course, is Parasite, the organic card that we couldn't omit uh, in this archetype either. Uh, so damage an enemy unit by six or boost an allied unit by six instead. Uh, very good in removal and we get a little drone on top of that. Then the Bone Talisman functions as a very good finishing card. If our board is completely filled, this card is 18 points because you boost all allied units by one. Simple as that. Sadly, not an organic card, uh, but even without that, it's just a really good card. Um, and I don't think it would even matter all that much. We would get a single drone extra, but if our field is already full, that wouldn't really matter all that much. And then our first tutor card, Wispus Tribute, two power for uh, eight provisions and on deploy if you put him on, well, her, on the range row, you play an organic card from your deck. Usually we want to pick something big and the biggest card we have at that front is the Crimson Curse, but you can definitely use this card to also get uh, your swarm growing a little bit more quickly. And then the Arakas Behemoth, three power for eight provisions and on deploy you spawn two drones and boost all other insectoids on this row by one. So that includes the two drones that he spawns. So uh, this could be up to, if I calculate this really quickly, seven plus six, uh, 13 points for eight provisions. It's not the strongest card in the world, but it, it functions really well within this archetype. Then Doldulok. Doldulok is basically used as a... Um, well, a, a, a card that can generate another Chimera, so we've seen that already. And on order, you also move the highest powered unit to the top of your deck and spawn a drone on both sides of the card. So we get a few extra drones and we guarantee what the top card in our deck is for hopefully the next round. The downside to the Lock is of course that you want to play this card in the first round because it is a location card that stays on the board for another round. So, and in our case, we do want to save as many spaces on our board as possible. So if Doldulok is still on the board, that's a space that we can't use for extra drones. So keep that in mind. Then of course, Yennefer of Vangerberg is in this deck as well. So two power and on deploy. We're always going to be using this on the range row most of the time. Um, we're going to boost all other units by two. Our field should be mostly full when we do that. Uh, so we get a lot of points. If you put her on the melee row instead, you damage all other units by two. But again, we don't really want to do that. And now we have the Arakas Queen. So six power for 10 provisions is a dead wish unit that spawns a copy of the consumed unit that she just ate. So on deploy, you consume an allied unit. On that wish, you spawn a base copy of that unit in the row. But what most people don't use this card for is actually what we're gonna be using it for. If you consume just a drone with this card, it's an insectoid and you spawn and play Arakas Nest on top of that. So we get five drones, and an Arakas Queen, which could possibly also get us another drone. You could also do this on the Andrega Eggs, which gives you three more drones on that row, and then another five somewhere else. So with Arakas Queen, technically, with a nest, you could fill the board in almost a single, well, in two turns, basically. Um, and you don't even need to keep her um, active for anything else, because the Death Wish ability is just a nice bonus if she dies. Now we have Crimson Curse, we talked about it before, our strongest organic card in the deck. Uh, when you play this card, you spawn the Blood Moon. The Blood Moon is a special row effect where at the start of the owner's turn, you give a random unit on that row bleeding for two turns. If the unit that would be getting the bleeding was already bleeding, you damage it by two instead. So basically 10 points since it goes for five turns. And you also spawn two Akimaras in the opposite row plus another drone. So that is seven points in bodies and then 10 points on the row effect. Very, very powerful card that we'll be using as a sort of tempo play. Then of course, Karate Heatwave, basically the card that we can use to take out scenarios or any other tall uh, card that we want to take out. And then Geralt Urden, which is one of those fancy additions. Well, not really fancy. It's, uh, it's something that we did in the meme army deck as well. But the downside of Yennefer Vengerberg, is, of course, is that you boost your opponent's units as well. With Geralt Urden, we basically circumvent that. Um, it's kind of the only way I feel like Geralt Urden uh, earns its place in a deck. 
because you're the one that also gives boost to your opponent so Urden should always get some kind of value if you combine those two cards so on deploy you reset the power of all units in a row this could be your own row as well but since all of our drones will be one power as a base uh, we will never use that on our side of the board but always going to be looking at a juicy row from our opponent and then a final card is on Aeromancy just to give us some more consistency in the deck. So uh, play any card from your deck and when you played this for the first time you get it back into your deck uh, on top of your deck at the start of the next round. So very very good consistency wise. And then we have a magic lamp so another five point body for us on the board me mostly just because we want to of course have as many units as quickly as possible so the lamp chin uh, functions well suits that role really well. And then our leader ability is Arca Swarm, where we ha also have an order ability where we spawn a drone on an allied row and we can do that five times at will. Um, and of course, whenever we play an organic card, we get another drone. So over the course of the match, that starts to add up to about 12 points on top of everything else. Um, I'm not entirely sure. So we have Crimson Curse, Double Spontaneous Evolution. Yeah, so it's seven points. I was kind of right on the money. No, eight. We have Parasite as well. Uh, so eight possible extra points, uh, but most of the time it's going to be a little bit less. So count about 10 to 12 points for Erika Swar. And that's it for the deck list. Again, you can import it to your own game using the link in the description. Let's head into a few example matches to see how this uh, is going to work out. And next up we have Earth Sign Ritual. That might actually be interesting. If we can manage to take out the most important cards and we get our combo pieces, which seems like we do... Uh, this is definitely possible. I'm gonna get rid of the Andrega Wire. Dole du Lok is always good to have in round one. We don't start. Um, and everything else is actually pretty useful to us. Um, maybe Parasites is the only thing that I don't really need. But a little bit of removal probably can't hurt. So let's uh, finish redrawing or do I just redraw Parasites? I could lock something as well. No, I'm gonna finish redrawing. We might be able to take out, depending on what type of Ursine Ritual deck this is, we might be able to take something out that might be useful. Ooh, Rain. Rain is, of course, less, less useful. Um, I'm going to start again with the one, well, again, because I played a match already, but you wouldn't, wouldn't have seen that. It was just a, a test match from my end. But we start with the Kikimori Warrior to then eat it with the Indrega Queen if it survives. Um, we do get a defender immediately. I could Karate the defender, but I don't think it's needed just yet. So let's just use the Andrega Queen and eat the Kikimori Warrior, giving us five extra drones on top of that. A defender this early is actually pretty interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was going to be Melusine. Uh But again, Melusine is not that big of a threat. Because we can Karate it once she's not protected by... Um, a defender there so let's just build up our swarm really slowly don't really care about that the uh, ability on medicine is not going to reset for now because they don't have a druid attached to it uh, or a cultist i should say because none of these are cultists and that goes to the wrong side that was interesting that's the wrong side you shouldn't be putting that over there. Um, fair enough. Um, I'm going to put down Spontaneous Evolution again. To see what our opponent does. And they're probably going to kill the... Uh, if they kill the Hafru now using the ability... Then I'm just going to pass. Yeah, okay. I'm going to pass. And we get Saris out already of, as well. That's really good. Because that means, that means that we don't need to worry about Saris later on. So, there we go. I think our opponent is thinking about making Malacene even bigger, so that would make her 17 points by the end of this. But I can just Coralty it afterwards if... no, okay. I mean, I can still Coralty here, I'm probably gonna do that anyway. So that is fine. It's actually really okay, because there's a lot in the graveyard now and they're not gonna be able to resurrect everything. Um, let's get rid of the Kikimori worker and we definitely don't need double Chimera, but... We do have double Chimera. If they dare put Malacene on the board now, then of course that card is just going to disappear. Uh, we don't have a Purify, so if they, they resurrected the Fender and then put Malacene behind that, then we're kind of screwed. 
Okay, we got Burnout. That's going to be double up on... Yeah, might be two extra bodies. Yeah, there we go. 15 points. Should be fine. I could put Crimson Curse down now, but Crimson Curse will be nine on deploy. 10 points, so the only thing I really need to do is, yeah, okay, that's fine. It's going to be just enough if our opponent passes. So let's put the Fuka down since we don't have anything to eat for the Chimera. And then afterwards we have just enough points with uh, Crimson Curse if our opponent would pass. Which is not guaranteed, by the way. He could just go for it here. Uh, but we have some tricks of our own if he wants to. The only problem is that Defender. I don't have a good way to take out that Defender unless he gets hit by the... Okay, it's Malacene. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. I'm not going to wait until the Defender pops up, so I'm just going to do this. There goes Melusine. Okay, and our opponent passes. We need... Uh, 9 points, which is just enough with Crimson Curse. There's not much else I can do here. Aside from maybe using Spontaneous Evolution is... 7, so I would need 2 more drones to finish that off. Um, and then I can save Crimson Curse for the next round, which is probably better. Um, so Spontaneous Evolution is 7. That gets me to 13, and then I need to add two more drones. Oh, yeah, and I get an extra drone, right. I only need one drone, so that is fine. Just enough spidery critters to win the second round. On to the final one. Our hand is pretty good. I would like a few more control options, and if I can get Erden in hand, that would be even better. The Arakas, ooh. Don't need this. That's another control option. Um, the Kikimori Worker is also really good. But I need removal options, so... Yeah. Okay, we get Crimson Curse, and we can use... Yeah, we can use... Whisper's Tribute however we want. Okay, so Erden is still in the deck. As well as the Arakas Behemoth, but we got most of our good cards here. Mm, that's, yeah, probably better to just do Arakas Queen. Um, so Arakas Queen can eat this drone, and then we get an Arakas Nest on the front row as usual. Because uh, you want to keep that back row as clean as possible. Um, for Yennefer, of course. So now you can see the downside to Dolty Lock. We have one space that we can't actually use for a unit. So we need to be very careful when placing our cards from now on. Luckily, we're not facing Nilfgaard because then it gets even more complicated because Nilfgaard can put a lot more units on our side of the board as well, cluttering our board with just crap in general. Then our opponent goes for Fukushia, immediately resurrecting the Defender. That was something that I was expecting. I'm going to put the um, Crimson Curse over there just in case we might get lucky. Um, that we can take it out with Parasite, but I don't think it will be the case. And our first bleeding goes to Fukushia. And there's Sigvald, so that's the big problem card in a deck like this. But we have Erden, so we can always take out uh, the points that are coming from that card. But of course, if we can take it out earlier with a lock, that would be handy as well. I could try to just hit the Defender now, in the hopes that I'm getting enough juice for um yeah the next hit so i'm gonna hit it with parasite that should be quite enough so that's um down to three points so sadly it didn't get hit with bleeding so it's gonna get one point of armor if we if that stays that way then that's enough for us to take out so there's two options um for sigval to handle that card because the card is overpowered as is um if we Manage to get the defender out, the, we have two options. We either lock it right with our final card, right before it uses its ability. If it uses his ability, then we... Oh boy. Never mind. Okay, so that just categorically means that we can't get rid of the defender anymore. We're not yet into Chimera range. Adrenaline range, that is. Um, the only two organic cards that we still have left is Natural Selection and Arakas Nest, so that makes things a bit more complicated as well. So that means that yeah, we don't have another option than to hit the, the Defender with Natural Selection, but that's not really useful, is it? It's gonna be the only option. Um, it's the only thing that I can do. If Bleeding goes onto Sigvault, by the way, Bleeding is the only thing that can actually damage Sigvault, but Merge Room is gonna... Yeah, make that card even stronger. Yeah, this is going to be over before it's even started. 
Um, I can now fill that front row fully with drones and just use the Chimera to get some extra points, but this uh, game is already over, I think. Unless they, for some reason, preemptively use Sigvald, but that defender, I can't really do anything against it anymore. So there's Nut. Nut is going to completely wipe our board. Nut is just going to kill everything that's slightly bigger. Um, that's going to add on to the bleeding on Sigvald. And yeah, it's, yeah, we can't really do anything against that. I mean, there's not much else to say. It's the only thing. What I could do is use Yennefer now. In the hopes that the next two damage hits the um, this thing, Covenant of Steel, instead of Sigvald. So I'm going to do that. Oh no, because I'm going to boost it. I'm going to boost it. Yeah, the only thing that I can do is actually put Natural Selection on the Covenant of Steel in the hopes that this will kill it now. Nope. Nope, we're out of luck. So the only thing that could save us if our, is if our opponent now... Because um, this is going to be funny. I'm going to actually <laughs> heal up nuts so they can't use nut again. Um, so there we go. Nut gets some more points. So does Sigvald. But yeah, there's not much else I can do here. I'm going to um, Urden on the next turn. So they're going <laughs> to... They're going to be damaging Nut again, but I think the Bleeding hits first. That's why the Leader Ability didn't come back. The Bleeding hits first, and then you the check happens first. Yeah, he doesn't get his ability back. Because I can reset most of it. Oh, they do boost him again. But they don't use the ability. Um, I'll see. I don't think this will make the difference. But because they're getting a few points back as well. It is, it looks big now, but I think that Sigvald is going to come over that again. Because if they have another murder room in hand, they can use that on Sigvald. Or not. Okay, so that was Nut, right? Yeah. Nut with 4 damage. This is going to be close. Although those 15 points, no, it's not going to be close. 46, there's going to be more. That's another 12. Uh, no. Oh, they need to hit something, though. They need to hit something with that 15 damage. Ooh, man. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Oh, man. One point. One freaking point. That was insane. That Mahakam Ale, by the way, that's been added in most of those decks because of the fact that they can also circumvent Locks then. So the only way that you can technically kill Sigvald then is Coyote. Um, yeah, that card needs to be nerfed because it's just crazy. I'm going to keep this one in just because of that. Um, but it's crazy. I did have... I'm going to show you the screenshot here. I did have one match where I did um, an, uh, an Urden on a similar match. But where the Sigvald was a little bit more focused in an Alchemy deck. And he was at 148 points. And then I just slammed an Urden in his face. Um, so that was a lot more fun. So that's something that could happen. Um, so you could win with this deck. But let's try and find a match where this uh, works out a little bit better. And then we get Skellige again with Blaze of Glory. That's actually not that much of a problem. Again, this deck is really well suited against most decks, just because of the fact that we don't have any tall cards. Uh, we also don't really have stuff to damage, so if you're facing pirates, those drones can't really be damaged. But there are a few archetypes, of course, like uh, the boats with Skellige can easily take out the swarm continuously. I have all the good cards, basically. I'm gonna finish redrawing for now already. This is a good starting hand. Um, let's just start with the Andrega egg. So that's something that our opponent really can damage. But what I was saying, so there's um, also Nilfgaard is mostly harmless against this deck because there's not really something useful that you can lock. There's not something useful that you can take over aside from, of course, your final combo pieces. So Yennefer and Urden should probably not be used if you're um, starting out against an assimilate deck because of course those are going to be just copied and then you have zero benefit because Yennefer can be used in the other direction as well then. I think Andrega Queen might actually be good or we could push with Arakas Queen as well. That might actually be a better option. Yeah, let's do that. That's going to be a big swarm really quickly. 
Because now we can do Arika's Nest over there. And next turn we can eat the uh, Arika's Queen with the Andrega Queen. Although that's going to be a very big spider. Okay, Svalblood Cultist, uh, Svalblood Priest, which is going to be good against that, um, yeah, that Bear School Witcher. Um, I should probably just parasite it. It's going to be so big, I shouldn't leave that alive. Yeah, let's just stick the magic lamp as well. There we go, 24, 9. Our opponent is going to get another 7 points, because that's actually a really good starting play. Um, oh, oh, wait. What's the last one then? Oh, a cultist. So it is 14 regardless, yeah. It's 14 on the portal and then 2 with Avalok, so that's 16 points just to start with. It is risky, but I feel like it's warranted to now use the queen on the queen. So double queen. So we get those 4 points from the Indirega eggs back. And then technically we could also eat that again. But it's not something we're going to be doing. Hafru Singer. Wait, why didn't you... Oh, because the Adapt now heals for longer. That actually makes sense. Um, I mean, I could lock that. If I use any of the organic cards here, I'm going to actually uh, fill up my board. So that is no good. I'm going to actually lock... Do I lock the Bear Witcher Adapt? That's saving us two points um, in total. But if I lock this... Then I save two points per turn, so that I think is probably better. And then next up we can use the Chimera to get some more points. And we still have a couple of removal options for later on. Uh, I didn't have a natural selection, otherwise that would of course have been the option there. And we get a Veteran. I'm gonna keep pushing. I wanna definitely win this first round, although I think Erden is gonna be basically useless. So we're 21 points ahead, but no engine capabilities. Our opponent has one more engine, and of course that veteran is also something that you can definitely hit with stuff and get points back. Veterans are really, really underappreciated cards. I think it's one of the strongest cards in the uh, the, the bronze category for uh, self and Skellige. And we get the Raging Bear, there we go. So that's 8 on 8. And another point from the Bear Witcher Adept. They're gonna lead her. And Sunset Wanderers. Okay, that was really aggressive. Um, fair enough. I need to clearly realize that I'm not gonna go over that. I did waste my lock. And there might be a Defender Arnagat situation going on there. But that's not that much of a problem. Again, we don't have any tall cards aside from the Queen that I just created. I know. Um, but other than that, we should be pretty fine. I'm going to get rid of the Warrior. We basically have the tools that we need. What else do we still have? The Behemoth. Yeah, the Behemoth really doesn't want to come out. Although Natural Selection might not have a good target. Unless we get one of those uh, Singers again. Which is definitely an option. But if we now just get a Defender slammed again, then it's going to be a tough one. A tough cookie to crack. Okay, we got nothing at all. Uh, do I still have any of those? Yeah, I still have every single one of those organic cards left, so I can just do this. And then end the turn there. So we... Yeah, we definitely are on the back foot here. The Urden is going to be pretty limited. So if I don't need to take it in hand, I might actually not go for it. We get another Spontaneous Evolution, another Arakas Nest. Uh, but Spontaneous Evolution is actually better. We get Urden in hand. Now, am I, am I gonna walk back the thing that I just said? There could be value in Urden. I'm gonna play my cards regardless, so Yennefer is definitely gonna boost some stuff. So, in that case, I think I don't need Natural Selection, because that's just gonna add more trouble than it's worth and we get the Kikimoi worker instead which is not not ideal but it is something I mean, it's a good card to start with actually it doesn't really matter all that much it's something that can be easily destroyed of course um, but it might also be bait the Tweersock veteran again uh, not much we can do against that unless we want to karate it but that's definitely not something we want to do 
uh, a natural selection is one point off from actually doing something with that. I'm gonna just put a single drone down and then put uh, spontaneous evolution on that. Giving us the start of a glorious swarm. And we get this Fall Blood Priest, which is of course a very nice uh, combination card there. But again, this Fall Blood Priest is going to a big height, so I can definitely uh, reset that later on as well. I'm gonna put another one down and just put Spontaneous Evolution over here. And we get most of the extra drones on our front row, so that is also fine. I could have natural selection that veteran now as well, I do realize that. Uh, but there might be another one incoming here. Oh, we get the Hafu Singer. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I can kill that. I can kill that with a, a, a bit of a roundabout way as well. Because I can do... Yeah, just on Aeromancy, Whispers Tribute... Uh, into natural selection onto the Hafu Singer. That gold is the most out of it, I think. Um, next up will be the Crimson Curse on the front row. And we get another Hafu Singer. Okay, fair enough, because that first one was a resurrected one, of course. Um, so Crimson Curse on the front row. Do need to be careful, again, with the board state that we don't overswarm, but with the rain on that row, it should be fine. A Drummond Shield Maiden. A Drummond Shield Maiden. We have Korati. But right now there's not that much to actually... Korati, if that's a, a verb. So we can fill the front row, that's not a problem. And then fill the back row mostly. And then just use Yennefer Fingerberg. Um, like this. There we go. So next up we can use the Bone Talisman. Next up we can... Um, try and see, so that's probably going to copy... Ooh, Sayus. Sayus is good for healing, but I don't know what you would heal at this point. Sig Vault might still be coming. Uh, I can put out the Sig Vault if that happens. Um, so that's another 17 points for us. And that front row is still taking a beating, so that is absolutely fine. And I think with Sayus we might actually be able to reset a bit sooner. And just keep Korati for the final whammy. Because I feel like we haven't seen a lot of the big gold cards, uh, gold cards in this deck so far. While well, I've basically uh, played all my cards right now. Because the only thing I think that's still relevant here is yeah, the Behemoth. But we had enough um, swarm potential anyway. But what's it going to be? We had another Megascope, so no... Ooh. Interesting. And we get another priest there. Yeah, I'm gonna earn the uh, the back row. I think that's probably the better option. That is 15 points right now. Um, mine is the one for the veteran. So that is gonna be back row. There we go. So 40 points ahead, but still, I'm really scared against decks like these. They have two extra cards as well. So this definitely isn't over yet. There's a pretty easy way to take 10 points away from me with the Kikimore Worker there. Um, unless they also have an Urden in that case. Ow. Okay, so they, def they definitely have something. So the Priest is gonna be a few, but that's only one point per turn. Um, I think the Veteran is probably the better option to take out. Because that's 8 points. Because the Priests... I can't... Erase both of them. We have Saris as well, so the veterans might continuously be um, healed. So I'm just gonna Koyalti the uh, the Triosak Vet in there. We still get a little bit of bleeding, um, but that is only 32 points that our opponent needs to make. And I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, well, for us, I think they, they're gonna have enough stuff to deal with. It's weird to see the Self Wound archetype with the Blaze of Glory. We get a lot. That's not a lot. And then now we're going to get the uh, the heal on the uh, the veteran. And we get Korati on that 10. That's it. Oh, wow, we won. Wait, that was a weird deck. Another Skellige deck, but definitely not as powerful. There was only one card left in their deck either. That was odd. 
And then last but not least, we have a Monsters Showdown against Overwhelming Hunger. That is going to be interesting. Because that there's a few archetypes for Overwhelming Hunger. Either it's pure Death Wish, which it most likely will not be. Um, the other options are less fun, I should say. There's the Gurney option, which we definitely can reset. Especially if they put everything behind the defender. But yeah, we'll have to see what uh, our opponent will play in this matchup. We get ooh, the Apiarian Phantom as a start. Um, I can definitely parasite that. There's not that many options to properly parasite, I think. Although this is just one point. If we get the uh, the, the Witches on the Pig, um, the Prentice, that's probably not that good. So let's just do Arika's Nest and just try to keep it slow in this first round. Our opponent has the benefit either way, so there's no point in playing any of our good cards. Just there, just take it easy. Laissez aller, laissez faire, as the French say, which basically means let, just let them do whatever they want. Seriously? You're gonna try and do that? Okay. Um, it's only four. So Spontaneous Evolution boosts that drone up to 5, so they only have 1 power targets for now, either way. So that is A-OK. -okay. Uh, we're actually ahead, or equal at least. Our opponent hasn't used their, uh, their thingy here, their Urn of Shadows yet, their Stratagem, to trade another Death Wish. And he, we actually have a pretty OK hand for this. I'm going to put down the Kikimora Worker next and then the Behemoth on the same row because that basically fills that row. This is looking okay for now and our opponent is playing all their highest cards. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. That's three golds in a row. We do get the Arcaspore, but no consumes just yet. Okay, so Kikimora Worker, another one that can't really be taken away by um, Maruna. And I'm, of course, purposefully holding off on using any of our fancier cards. Because um, that could fill the row now, but I'm not going to. Because I really want to keep some space for Doldulok. Um, but for Doldulok, of course, we want to have the Chimera be set up for Adrenaline. So it will depend on our opponent how long we're going with this. Ooh, and we lose one of the drones in the front row. Very aggressive, and we ooh, we lose another drone as well. <laughs> now we're gonna lose another one. There we go. There's the big play. Twenty-seven eleven. All of a sudden, um, not that much of a problem for now. And Drega Queen maybe on top of one of the drones. Cause I lost a few drones over here. Uh, I also lost the Kiki More Worker. Right, that was the one that I lost. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do. And Drago Queen over here. And that's going to give us two more drones on that row. In over the course of the next two turns. And we're only nine points behind after that onslaught, which is fine. And we get a pass. Okay. Then I'm going to use that to actually trick it all to lock. Um, I know we don't have the benefit. Uh, we won't be getting the Chimera. Yeah, the Chimera is still the better option here. Um, the Chimera going. Uh, but I can double tap it in a minute. And we can use the Arakas Behemoth over here. And get a nice head start and a bit of consistency for the next round. So now I'm going to try and keep most of my tall removal stuff in hand. I'm going to get Oneiromancy, so Karate is guaranteed. Um, Parasite I would like as well, and Crimson Curse. So we get a natural selection, which is probably not going to be that useful, but keep more Worker gone. Arakas Queen is good. And Parasite, okay, that's a good start. Uh, of course, we're going to pass. And I still don't have a good eye on what our opponent is actually playing. I'm assuming it's just pure Death Wish. Um, considering that we haven't seen like Gurney Core or anything fancy like that, so... This should be fine, or at least doable, since we also have Erden, uh, which will yeah, reset a lot of stuff on that side of the board. And we get an Oneiromancy as well, so they can play with Ed. Uh, Say what now? 
And then they're gonna article school. So it is that deck, <laughs> okay. What? Why? What? Why? That's gonna trans... No, it's not gonna transform. So that's triple... That's gonna be triple gurney. But it's all gonna be on the same row, so... I am fine with that. I can reset that entire row and I have final say. So Kiki More Worker goes and Draga Eggs is too risky. I'm gonna fill my row and then of course Dorgare to lock anything that goes on the road that they didn't want us to go on. What are we gonna get back? Uh, okay, Chimera, Kiki More and that's well, actually a nice batch of points. That is 18 points, it's actually pretty good. To get back it's gonna mess with my setup a little bit um, but i can eat the kiki more worker and possibly even get another one back i could even consume it with chimera we get squirrel oh so now they're banishing yeah they're banishing my card so now yeah it's gonna be that was four points less now that is gonna have to be crimson curse on that row yeah let's do crimson curse on that row just to uh be very aggressive here. It's the most points anyway. And it's gonna at least kill a little squirrel. So the Kikimore worker line is gone. Um, Alzu's double cross is the defender of course. Gonna be putting that down in the back. So we're gonna get our units in the back as well. That's good. That's what I was kind of hoping for. Natural selection and parasite. Well parasite I can use on my own units. Um, but other than that. There's not much use for this. Um, I'm gonna do Arakas Queen on the drone and then put the Arcas nest on the front row filling in our front row so the rest of the crimson curse is not going to run its course but i do want to avoid damaging um the combo that's incoming um so i'm just going to take out the pieces that i can actually access um so uh parasite natural selection the lock it's all going to be fine so that's going to be witch's sabbath putting our three highest powered units from the graveyard back in the back so that is filling our um, board a little bit here. And we get three Gurney Cores. It's going to fill the field with um, yeah, more of those. And they're going to transform completely. Okay. We were expecting this. Um, so I'm not going to wait actually with our combo piece. We need... Uh, not that many spaces left. I think I'm actually going to use Parasites now to boost one of our... Ooh, and those are going to also get more drones. I really need to be careful with my board state here. Um, so I'm going to boost one of the drones to six. And luckily that drone goes on the front row. That is fine. That is fine. Because uh, we're going to get two more drones in the back here. So I'm thinking I need three spaces left. So I can't actually put any more drones down. Um, oh crap. That is going to take the bleed. And next turn is going to take... Ah, oh, and I just used Parasite. Yeah, I'm going to lock it. Um, so that puts this row to 7 and then to 8. So I can't put anything else on that row. Oh boy. Oh boy, this is going to be really close. So there we go. Lock on the beast. I'm going to be using Yennefer. Oh wow. Yeah, purify that. So that even gets rid of the bleed. Um, I'm gonna Yennefer now. I could Bone Talisman as well. It's gonna be only one point in difference. So that's just Bone Talisman now. There we go. And we got a little bit out of the bleed. Because <laughs> the belly is now bleeding. Now which is Sabbath. But which is Sabbath is... Yeah, it's gonna boost, of course. I should have kept Parasite. That was stupid. Um, next up is the Chimera in the front. Always need to be careful, need to put that in the front. I'm gonna actually have to toss Natural Selection, which is insane. Oh boy, that Purify was really... So that's six points at the front row as well every single turn. And there's nothing I can do about that anymore. I mean, I can Korati the... the Beast. Korati the Beast. There we go. Take that out of the picture. That's gonna be one hell of an urden, by the way. I cannot use natural selection. It's another death wish trigger, but for nothing. Uh, so a bio was a bit wasteful there. Um, and I can't even add another drone. So I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna just toss natural selection now. Just to 
push this as far as I can put it. So that's another consumed there. We can boost everything now. There we go. Oh boy. I can't even calculate that at the moment, how much that's going to be, that Erden. But for now, it seems like we won this. So they reset one of my drones. So I'm at 101 points. So the pure, the reset needs to take out 77 points. And I think it's going to do that easily. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was 99 points gone because of the reset. Yeah. And that's already going to be it for this episode. Um, so the list is pretty... It basically works against half the decks in the meta right now. Again, if you're facing uh, a lot of one damage pings, then it's going to be hard because your opponent always has the option to um, clear out your um, side of the board. So that takes out Northern Realms and certain Skellig decks. Um, on the other hand, um, assimilate is basically perfect to counter this because they can always either with coup de grace or with double cross get Yennefer of Angerberg and just reverse whatever you did with Yennefer of Angerberg or even just use Geralt Erden and take away most of your points. So those are the basic um, annoyances but if you're facing like a Nilfgaard status deck this is perfect. If you're facing uh, pirates, this is perfect. It can take away any of your opponent's combo pieces and they can't damage uh, almost nothing in this deck, which is really good. Um, and then of course, uh, Syndicate, likewise, there's not much bounties to gain in this deck. All of the units are one power, um, with a few exceptions of course, but uh, most of the units on the board will be that. So even Syndicate with bounty doesn't really have an option and with Erden you can clear out most of their advantages. So. It's a bit of a two-sided, uh, two double-edged sword. That was the term I wanted to use. Uh, but definitely a lot of fun to play, especially if you can uh, nuke uh, a, a nasty Sig Vault or something like that. So next time, um, we're going to be probably going into either Skellige or Northern Realm. Skellige, I want to just highlight how incredibly powerful uh, Sig Vault is, because I feel like a lot of decks use him, but not maybe to his fullest. Uh, I've seen him, uh, some crazy combos with him, and uh, I just want to highlight why that card definitely needs a nerf. And otherwise, we're just going to do another cooldown deck with uh, Northern Realms, because that has gained a lot in popularity. Um, and I feel like I was one of the people that even before those uh, changes was already using uh, cooldown siege engines a lot. Um, so we'll see what the future brings. But before that, I want to thank you all enormously for watching this episode of Gwentage. If you like the deck, don't forget to leave, leave an upvote on the Play Gwent website, leave a like on this video and just give me some feedback on the deck itself. Maybe we can improve it further because that's what we're here for after all. We're trying to help each other out. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye and stay nutty.